Welcome to this short tutorial on how to prepare check term for your first checking. When I start check term, it first asks me which mode I want to log into. If you are using um, check term as just a desktop software, like as a freelancer, or your company does not have a check term server, start it as normal mode. Only if you have a check term server, then you can log on to the server and actually you don't have to do any settings uh, in the desktop tool. This will all be done on the server by your administrator. Um, but for this tutorial, we're gonna log on in desktop mode. So let me start check term. Checkterm realizes that uh, you have not yet added a term base. Of course not, it's the first time we start the program. Um, so it immediately takes me to the add term base screen uh, in the check term options. You can also find that by right mouse clicking here um, and saying so, uh, show options. Um, so I go in here and I say add term base. Um, there are several ways you can do that. One is by connecting to a multi-term server, uh, if you have a multi-term server. Um, the other one is by loading a local term base from uh, an SDL term base file. And you just browse um, to that file and say, okay, I want to add this term base. Um, I'm actually, oops, I'm actually going to load one from the server. Um, it's the same thing, just that I have a demo term base there to use. Uh, and then I say add term base. There's two more things I need to tell it about this term base. Um, one is how in this term base can check term see uh, whether a term is allowed or not. Um, so it takes me into the uh, term base settings dialog where first of all, okay, I can see if it still exists. Um, but more importantly, I can go into the passing rules, uh, which will tell me how do I actually uh, read this term base and understand uh, the structure of it. Um, Typically in a term base, you will have a field uh, that indicates term usage. Um, so in my demo example, for instance, this is a field on term level called usage. So let me get rid of these because those are from an old installation and I don't want to have this look different than on your end. Um, so basically on my side, I have a field that is called usage and it's of course on term level. Uh, and it can have several values which check term reads from the term base. Um, so for instance, it could be set to standard. Um, and if set to standard, then that means that this is an approved term. So I go to add. Um, it can also have the value rejected. So in this case, uh, it is forbidden. And I set that to add. Um, in my particular case, it can also have the value variation, um, in which case it's maybe not always allowed, but it's also not really forbidden. Um, so for that, we have the not approved uh, value in check term, which means something like restricted use. So you have to look more closely, could be okay, but maybe not. It's not strictly forbidden, but it's not strictly approved either. Um, and one more thing you can set up is you can set up, okay, what uh, if the term has no usage label at all? So if there is no usage field, um, then you can say, for instance, well, then that always means they're approved. Um, so this is how I tell check term how to find out whether a term is approved or not uh, in my term base. The other thing I have to do, okay, I can set this as the default profile for the next term base as well. Um, the other thing I have to set up is an, what we call an analysis profile. Um, to do that, I go into analysis. There already is uh, a default profile here, but it's not set up. So I need to go in here. Um, and it says that everything I configure here is immediately applied. So that's a good thing actually. Um, and the most important thing I have to tell it here is which term base uh, should this analysis profile use. Um, check term can use more than one term base, um, or you could set up different analysis profiles with different term bases, for instance. Um, then we have all sorts of uh, linguistic uh, settings like the fuzziness, like uh, whether or not to enable the stemming functionality and how to deal with composite terms, etc. Um, a lot of this simply depends on uh, the language that you're using this with. Um, and what you could also do is you could filter. Um, so you can create filters uh, in check term um, and then apply them to the term base. For instance, if you want to filter out complete entries or maybe also complete terms, so you might have some terms labeled as only for client A, um, but you're doing a translation for client B. So you want to completely filter out all the terms that are labeled client A. So you can do that here by filtering. All of these things are then stored in an analysis profile. Um, and now I can actually go in and check already. So let me start studio some unsigned plugins here still. Okay, and I have prepared a mistranslated photo printer with a few errors so that we have um, something to laugh about. Just open those. OK, 
Okay, and in the add-in bar of Studio, um, we will find that there is uh, another segment in the ribbon, uh, which is about the check term. So what I do here is I now click on Analyze Document. Um, and now I can check, uh, I can select number A, my analysis profile. So remember, this is uh, which term bases to use, uh, which filters to use, um, etc. Um, I can select the analysis type um, in Studio. So for instance, I could check only the source language. I could check only the target language. Um, I could do a contrastive uh, analysis. So if something is found in the source language, then the respective term should also appear in the target language. Um, or I can do an extensive uh, or extended uh, analysis, which will basically check for everything, um, source, target, and translation. I'm gonna just do a target only, um, then it's a little bit easier. Um, so what I do is I say analyze, uh, and now it actually goes in uh, and does the analysis uh, and produces the results uh, over here on the sidebar. Um, don't be bothered by this, this is our quick term plugin. Just get rid of that. This is what you know. Um, and it basically lists uh, all the problematic hits you have. Um, so for instance, this first one here, it says, okay, the term Bilderdrucker in German, um, that's actually problematic. Uh, it's labeled as do not use um, or as forbidden. Um, I can double click on this. Then it uh, shows me the actual entry uh, from my term base. Um, okay not in German, so I must have some restriction here. Um, also, it'll list down here um, possible replacements. So it actually reads from the term base that while Bilderdrucker is forbidden, Fotodrucker would actually be allowed uh, in German. So I can go in here and then I can say, okay, replace this. Uh, and then it replaces this with Fotodrucker uh, and the error goes away. Um, and I can now do this uh, for all of them. Um, I can also do this automatically by clicking on this one here. Um, so what that does is it chooses the first available correct option uh, and replaces it. Remember, you need to check the grammar. Um, so if you uh, search and replace for one word and uh, yeah, search for one word and replace it with another one, that can have grammatical problems, um, gender and singular plural, etc. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is obvious just like in search place so for instance here we have a capital r in the middle because it's actually a composite noun um, that it's trying to use here um, so i go through this um, i fix everything um, and then i'm essentially done um, the other thing i can do uh, in here is rather than going through it interactively um, i can create the report so again i go on analyze document um, and i don't even click on analyze i just go directly on create report tell it where to store, store my report. I'm gonna create a new folder on the desktop. Um, and then it actually opens that folder. Um, and this is an HTML report that I can open in a browser uh, and it lists um, the problems. Uh, okay, I should have done another analysis because now it still lists these problems that I have actually fixed already. Um, but for instance, down here, this one should still be wrong. Um, so it says, this word appears in your translation. Um, I have uh, found out that there is a similar term that's made up of actually two terms, so a composite of two terms, um, out of which one is forbidden, um, so I should be uh, replacing that. Um, that's basically what it tells me. So for here instance, the Bilderdrucker Daumenschraube should be replaced with Fotodrucker Augenschraube, all made up words, so don't worry about it. Um, yeah, and that's essentially how you use check term.